Hey guys, welcome back. I hope you are having an amazing day. Let's get right into the stories. The first one is a pro-revenge story. I used to work in the warehouse and delivery department for a retail chain a few years back. The entire management structure was built on treating the people below them like crap. And this attitude trickled down through every level. Supervisors would just bark commands and chew us out for the slightest reasons. They paid us just a quarter above minimum wage, while the big bosses drove around in fancy BMWs and Lexuses. The CEO lived in a lavish $10 million mansion. Our store served as the freight hub for four other locations in the chain, so we often interacted with drivers from those stores as they came to load or drop off merchandise. One day, while chatting with two drivers, Ethan and Mike, from another store, Ethan mentioned that they were both working over 60 hours per week. I assume they must be raking in the overtime pay, but Ethan revealed that they were just getting paid at their regular hourly rate. I asked if they had signed any sort of overtime exemption agreement, but he said no. He showed me his pay stub, and sure enough, no overtime wages were listed. Mike confirmed the same thing when he returned, and they'd been dealing with this for months. Ethan said he'd asked his manager about overtime pay, but was told that straight hourly pay was just how it worked. I urged them to file a complaint with the labor board, but they were hesitant, fearing retaliation or getting fired, so I dropped it for the time being. We never received any overtime pay either, despite our warehouse being constantly busy. A couple of months later, Ethan and Mike were back at our store, and Mike told us that he and his girlfriend were moving back east, so he was putting in his two weeks' notice. I reminded him to file that overtime complaint since he had nothing to lose now. And he did. A few weeks later, when I arrived at work one day, there were a bunch of fancy cars belonging to the higher-ups parked along the loading dock. My co-worker mentioned that something major was going down. All the managers had been summoned and were inside with a group of people in suits, so we wandered upstairs to see what the commotion was about. The company's bookkeeper, a nice Chinese immigrant guy named Jin, had an office in our store and handled all the payroll. The bosses were trying to pin the overtime fiasco on him, claiming that his limited English skills must have led to him messing everything up. But Jin was a crafty fellow. He had documented proof of him warning the bosses that what they were instructing him to do was illegal, and their responses telling him to basically shut up and follow orders anyway. He handed over all the evidence and quit on the spot. I ran into Ethan with a new partner a few weeks later. He showed me a pay stub representing about 15 paychecks worth of back overtime pay he had received. The company got slapped with a hefty fine on top of all the owed wages they had to pay out. As an added bonus, the vice president had driven over a nail when he parked his silver BMW on the loading dock and ended up with a flat tire. When he came out of the store, he called me over and said, change that for me. I told him, sorry, that's not my job, and if I injure myself, my worker's comp claim would get denied. As he went back inside to call a tow truck, I stood on the loading dock, surveying the chaos I had inadvertently caused, and my heart felt a sense of satisfaction. The next one is an entitled people story. I've lived in my house for over 15 years and have never had an issue with any of my neighbors. Everyone pretty much keeps to themselves, but will give a friendly wave or quick hello if we happen to both be outside at the same time. It's your typical quiet suburban neighborhood where nothing exciting ever really happens. That all changed a few months ago when the house next door sold and the new owner Karen moved in. Right from the start, something seemed off about her. The day she moved in, I came outside to see her standing in my front yard, looking around with a clipboard and taking notes. When I asked if I could help her with something, she glared at me and said she was just surveying the property. I told her this was my yard, not hers, and she needed to get off my property. She huffed off without another word. Over the next few weeks, I started noticing little changes around the outside of my house. A bush I had near my front door was suddenly missing. The lawn ornaments and flower pots that I had set out were moved around or put in different spots. It was odd, but I figured maybe some neighborhood kids were messing around as a prank. That theory went out the window the day I came home to find my front fence partially torn down. Karen was out in her yard watching with a satisfied look on her face. I confronted her and asked if she did this. She had the audacity to say yes, she felt that ugly fence was an eyesore, so she took the liberty of fixing it for me. I told her she had no right to touch or damage my property. She claimed because the fence was on the edge of my property line, she was allowed to modify it however she pleased. I'd had enough of her crazy antics and told her if anything like this happened again, I was calling the police. She said I didn't have any proof it was her and stormed off. After that incident, I installed some security cameras to keep an eye on things. Sure enough, a few days later I checked the footage and saw Karen sneaking into my yard with some tools. She started taking down my fence again. 
I immediately called the police and showed them the video when they arrived. The officer tried to get Karen to explain her actions. She went off on a tirade about how I didn't properly maintain the fence so she had to fix it. How she needed full access between our yards and the fence restricted that. The best part was when she tried to claim I was the one trespassing into her yard when the footage clearly showed otherwise. The officer finally had to put his foot down and tell Karen to stop talking. He informed her that she committed destruction of property and trespassing by damaging my fence, which was fully on my property. She kept trying to interrupt to defend herself, but the cop wasn't having it. He told her she was under arrest and if she resisted, he would have to use force. You should have seen her face when he put the cuffs on her and led her to the squad car. She looked completely shocked, like she couldn't believe she was actually being arrested. As they drove away, I thanked the officer profusely for his help. I found out later Karen had to pay a huge fine for the property damage and trespassing charges. Even better, she's now banned from coming anywhere near my property again. The story spread quickly around our neighborhood about the crazy lady getting arrested for destroying her neighbor's fence. Now everyone gives her a wide berth and keeps interactions to a bare minimum. I decided to install an even taller, sturdier fence as well, just in case she tries anything again. Let's just say I'll be keeping a close eye on the security footage anytime I have to leave the house now. At least if she does try anything, I've got video evidence and won't hesitate to call the cops again. She may think she's above the law, but karma caught up quick when the officer slapped those cuffs on her. Don't mess with other people's property unless you want to take a ride in the back of a squad car. The next one is a petty revenge story. I have a coworker that I thought was my friend. We have worked together for almost a year. A few months ago, she walked out on her job. She wanted to come back, and I got her her job back. I've loaned her money, bow her food when she didn't have any, and even defended her on multiple occasions. Well, yesterday I found out that she has been talking mad crap behind my back, and flat out lying about me to the new employees. It really hurt because I have done so much for her. I was on closing shift last night, so I had to do the deposit. On the top of the deposit bag, we write our tip so we can minus it in the daily operating report to see if we are short. And we leave the top of the deposit bag on the desk because the deposit bag number is needed to open the store in the morning. I know for a fact that this coworker gets angry when she sees people getting large tips. It makes her jealous because she is really bad with money and always totally broke. And because of how she treats customers, she never gets tips. I decided to write a fake number for my tips. I only got like $8 in tips, but I wrote $48 knowing it was going to totally destroy her whole day. There is no way for her to verify my tips, and writing a fake number down doesn't affect anything at all. It's not like it will mess up count or anything, and 48 in tips wouldn't be common but not unheard of for a Friday night. I've gotten larger tips for the night. Then, today she texted me asking if I could come into work an hour early so she could leave an hour early. I've never told her no before. I've always helped her out when she asked, but today I rocked the boat and told her nope. I know she's at work right now totally fuming because she thinks I got large tips and because I would not come in early for her. I'm sitting here eating my dinner in my car feeling satisfied for the moment. Update. So, I didn't expect my pettiness to have such an effect on her. I got to work tonight, and as soon as I walked in the door, she started slamming stuff around and throwing stuff. I went straight into the bathroom and texted my GM. He immediately got on the security cams and started watching her. I kept my head down and my mouth shut and said absolutely nothing to her. After watching her for about five minutes, he hopped in his car and came straight to work, on his day off. She still didn't stop slamming stuff around, but it wasn't quite as violent once he got to work. He told me he was going to have a sit-down with her tomorrow about her behavior and her creating a hostile work environment for everyone when she behaves that way. My GM said he hopes she quits tomorrow so we don't have to deal with her anymore. Update 2. I have a routine before work. I usually leave an hour and a half before work, grab some dinner, and then sit in a parking lot playing Pokemon Go. I drove by work and her car is there, so obviously she didn't walk out. Ugh, I was really hoping to see my GM's car there and not hers. Let's see how she is behaving today after my GM spoke with her. Final update, I get to work and she starts slamming stuff around again. I just keep my head down and ignore her. I text the GM. She then calls the GM and lies about a few things. Whatever. I don't care at this point. GM confronts her about slamming stuff around. She denies it, hangs up on him, leaves her key in the office and clocks out and leaves. On her way out the door, she threatened to sue me for defamation of character. I almost laughed in her face. But I just ignored her. Looks like the trash finally took itself out. The next one is a malicious compliance story. I guess I have a short story from the opposite angle I was the manager, and the Malicus compliance person was one of the guys on my team. This was 10 plus years ago, and we were working at a software technology startup. 
it was a small company with only around 10 employees, and I led the software engineering team of around four employees. We hired a software engineer, and he seemed good, but there were a few red flags. We would go out to lunch, and he would always order at least a few beers. We didn't have any explicit rules against drinking alcohol during lunch, so I just let it slide since it didn't seem to affect his work in the afternoon. And then the guy started disappearing early in the afternoon. Hours were somewhat flexible, but most people would get into the office at around 9 a.m. or so and leave at around 5 p.m. or so. For a standard 40-hour work week, taking time off for lunch, it seemed relatively normal for most people, and we had never had a problem with work hours in the past, but this guy would usually disappear at around 3 or 4 in the afternoon and was coming in at around 9 or 10 a.m. I'm actually not really a stickler when it comes to enforcement of work hours, and I believe that as long as you get your work done, you should be okay, but as a startup, there was always stuff to do and there was always a backlog of things to develop, etc. As a small team, we didn't have much redundancy, so guys would have questions for each other throughout the day, etc. It really did stand out as well, because since there were only 10 people in the company, the office space was pretty small, his absence was noticed by the CEO and other employees, etc. I asked him about his frequent early departures, and he just said that he had personal things to take care of sometimes, like doctor appointments, dentist appointments, DMV to do something, etc. Just random errands. I told him that it's all good, and while we aren't tracking time by the minute or anything like that, we generally expect people to work roughly 40 hours WBUK, and hopefully that's not too unreasonable. I suggested that maybe if he has an appoint so needs to leave, say, one hour early, he can also choose to come in an hour earlier on that day, or he can choose to work a little later, like an extra hour on another day to roughly make it up. He made some comments about how he's never worked at a company so strict before when it comes to work hours, and that all of the other places where he worked never had an issue, etc. And sure enough, the next day, when I came into the office, I was told that when the office manager came to unlock and open the office, he said that the guy had been waiting at the front door since 4 a.m. sitting there in the staircase because he was told that he needs to come in early if he's going to leave early, and since he was planning to leave at lunch, he came in five hours early. He gave notice shortly after that saying how unreasonable and strict we are, and he was gone a few weeks later. Maybe I was in the wrong here, but still seemed a bit odd at the time. FWEIW, the whole come in a little early if you need to leave early, things seems to work even in my current companies, etc. The next one is an entitled people's story. This happened years ago, but I just read something that reminded me of it. I went to my neighborhood subway to get dinner for my husband and myself. It was quite a wait with three people ahead of me and three behind me, and only one poor girl waiting on all of us. When it was finally my turn and the girl was asking me what I wanted, this arrogant asshat pushes his way in front of four other customers and butts and telling the girl he wants a cookie. Now if he had asked nicely I would have let him go in front, but he literally pushed his way past us all. He nearly knocked me off my feet. Didn't apologize, didn't ask, just pushed his way in front. He butted into my conversation and cut the girl off when she tried to explain that I was next. He yelled at her saying, I just want a damn cookie, get me a ducking cookie. I am a 5 foot tall, 112 pounds woman that had had a long day at work, and was very hangry. I step up to him, tap him on the shoulder, and say, excuse me, but we were before you, and motion to the rest of the line, now five deep. He looks at me down his nose, then to the others in line, and says, all I want is a ducking cookie. I say, and all I want is my ducking meal, just like the rest of the people in this line. So go to the back and wait like the rest of us have. He looked at me like I spit on his shiny Brooks bro shoes, or I was a wad of gum stuck to them. I'm late for a meeting and want a cookie, he says. Then you should have gotten here first, but you didn't. So go to the back of the line and wait your turn. Or leave, because it's my turn now. He opened his mouth to say something, but I held up one finger and pointed outside the store to my car with my husband in the driver's seat. And that six-foot-tall, 250 lullaby man is waiting for his meal as well. Go tell him all you want is a cookie and see what he says. I turn back to the server and tell her my order. He stands there for a moment, then leaves. The entire store starts clapping as he walks out. No cops, no rants, but I felt very satisfied as I eat my foot-long steak and cheese for dinner. The next one is an entitled parent's story. This is more on the personal side of things since I just came home from having my mother harass me in a bar. It was fun. Short background. My mother is a greedy liar that let her stepson Chris, who's 13 years older than me, abuse me since I was a small child. First physical abused, then SA. SA started when I was 14 until I was 16. Now she wants me to clear his student debt. And she had been mooching off my biological father's inheritance. As for last night, well, I decided to go out with some girlfriends for a girl's night. 
My half-brother Sam and his wife Sandy have been pushing me to go out for a while. We went to a local bar. I mostly stick to the stools by the bar as I'm a massive introvert, but I like seeing my friends having fun. So I was simply drinking and talking to the bartender in passing. Well, my good mood was ruined when I noticed my mother, thankfully alone, walked to me. The moment she saw me, she pretty much launched herself to hug me and began crying, saying how much she had missed me and how different I looked. I was trying really hard to get away from her, but she began causing a scene. She started begging for us to reconcile, that she was sorry I took my stepbrother's affection the wrong way, that they both love me and want me to live with them. She was loud and people were looking at me. Some even looked sorry for her, and I had people encouraging me to hug my mom back. It was embarrassing and just so wrong, I just exploded and told her to leave me alone and walked out. That was even worse because she kept following me with two or three randoms calling me an a-hole and terrible daughter. She just kept swearing Chris truly cares for me and wants us to be a family again. She even said that he found me so beautiful that he couldn't help himself when he essay me. She said, when he made love to you. I was a minor when he attacked me. He was almost 30. I just started crying and screaming at her to go away and leave me alone. Thankfully, one of my more sober friends called Sam and he came over very fast. He scared away my mom and took me home. I'm now 100% sure I don't want to go out. For people wondering why I never call the cops, I called the cops since I was 11 to report the abuse. I reported at 16 what he did to me. They took his side. I don't trust them. I truly believe cops don't care about SA victims. I'm just writing this to get it out of my system. My therapist is unavailable, so Reddit is the next best thing. The next one is an entitled parent's story. I just remembered this while talking with a friend I worked with at this fast food chain. It wasn't a Wendy's, but that doesn't seem important for this post. Just know it was a fast food chain. I was a cashier at this place in high school. The food was mid, my coworkers were awesome, and we went through more managers than parents do McDonald lines. This story starts with a mom and her two children. She came into our little establishment, ordered two kids meals, then left, leaving behind her two little kids. I had never spent much time with children and don't really like them, so two adultless children in our dining room gave me a lot of anxiety. Are they okay? Can you leave them alone? They aren't going to self-implode, right? I had a job to do and a dining room to clean. After thinking on it, I decided I could clean and just ignore them. That was when I noticed they weren't sitting at the booth doing whatever it is kids do when left to their own devices. They were under the table creating art on the wall with ketchup packets. I didn't know what to do, so I did nothing. Four hours passed, and she came waltzing in to collect her spawn. Okay, I was fairly accustomed to weird stuff happening, but this is manager notifying worthy. I popped my head into the deep freezer where she was doing inventory and let her know what was going on. And why didn't you come get me earlier? She asked. I don't know. I thought I could handle it. I'm a big scary teen, and they're, well, toddlers. Okay, not my best move, but now aware of the situation and armed with camera footage, my manager lets me know she will deal with her next time. Two days later and she gives us a round two. Another two kids meals. This time I don't wait and tell the manager ASAP. My manager serves this lady with a, and don't forget your kids this time, passing her a slip of paper. On the paper was the phone number to a local daycare that charged based on income of the family. Issue handled, I go out to clean tables and find these kids drawing on the table with salt. My manager got irate. Four-ish hours later, mom is back for her kids and my manager approaches. They go outside to have a tense conversation that ends with the woman storming off with her kids. I later found out she was pissed my manager assumed they were poor. My manager was ready for round three a week later. She came in, same order, this time my manager takes her order. When I go out to hand her the kids' meals, she is gone, leaving behind her kids. Cops arrived real quick, then child services, then the kids were gone and our little fast food chain went back to normal. That was for the next four hours. Side note, I am autistic. Not like very obviously autistic, not the kind that needs a ton of assistance, but a mild brand that will occasionally say the oddest thing. So keep that in mind when mom came back. Where are my kids? Oh, it's you again. I am smiling behind the counter. A couple of guys came in and took them. She went pale. Guys! What guys? What did they look like? When did they take them? What were doing that you weren't watching them? Well, I didn't get their names, but they looked big and strong and promised to take good care of them. I didn't talk to them, though. It wasn't any of my business. I'm a cashier, not a babysitter. I would make a bad babysitter. I don't really like kids. Thank you for watching. I would really appreciate it if you could like the video and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. We'll see you again tomorrow.